Hello YouTube, it's been a little while and I thought I'd revisit this turntable again. I get a lot of comments and questions about it and it's just very simple. So I thought, I'd, it's been a couple years since I made a video on it, I thought I'd go back and try to revisit it. Anyway, um, speaking of comments, since YouTube changed its format a little bit in analytics, I suddenly had hundreds and hundreds of unanswered comments show up in my comment section. I'm sorry for not ever answering any of those. I'd never seen them. They did not show up until just about two weeks ago. And I went through them for a little while and then I finally gave up. I don't even know how many there are. But <laughs> there's a tremendous amount of them. And I don't know where they were all these years. I mean, they go back from the start of my YouTube uh, channel. So, again, sorry about that. And, hell, it may happen again. I may not see them. But those of you that know me know that I try to answer every comment and question that I get. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Let's get back to this turntable. I want to show you what it is. A lot of people ask me about the bearings. How I ground it with bearings. There's no bearings here. There's none. Zilch. Nada. There's a hole in the table that the top part goes through. It feeds down into this piece of tubing that's attached to that platter. <clears throat> and let me take it apart for you to show you how that works. You just loosen this thumb screw. I'm just going to flip it upside down here, pull this out. And I'll show you the business end of this. Okay, I don't know if you can see that real well. Try to put some light in there. Okay, that is a just a little piece of bar stock with a drill, a hole drilled in it, and that's a drill point. You can see how it comes back to that, comes up to there, that's the ground attachment to my table. Here is the ground clamp to my welding machine that's attached to the table. Okay, now that's where it gets its ground, right there. This is a small piece of bar stock with a radius cut on the bottom. I did that in a lathe. And then I put a little bead around it to attach it to the plate. And then this piece of bar went through the plate up into this piece of tubing, which is not necessary. This could have been just welded right here, and this welded here. But somewhere here there was a plug weld. I don't even know where it was. We sanded it smooth to weld that little piece of bar into this piece of tubing. And then, of course, this is just a, you know, thumb screw to attach it to this piece here that slides down in. And this hole, the reason there's some, this is, I had to put some, I had to build this diameter up here. When I was making this table, this was 30 years ago. I had a helper with me and I had, I was turning this platter. Let me turn it over. I was putting these details in, turning the facing it so that it was square to the shaft and putting these scroll marks in and I had a helper and I I measured it and whatever this diameter was I told him to drill it a 32nd drill a hole in my table a 32nd larger than that diameter well <laughs> obviously he didn't understand a 32nd so he went and got the mag drill and he drilled it I'm not even sure what that hole is <laughs> but uh, it's quite a bit bigger than the Okay, 700 and, no, 812 thousandths, and uh, that's 5 eighths. So, yeah, he went oversized. 
I went to put it in there, of course it was real sloppy and I didn't want that, so I just went ahead and used deox, deox copper on here just so it would be like a bushing, you know, something that won't be galling or grain, you know, slowing it down when I spin it. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't ground through this. It grounds through that bottom. And the reason I know that is because this does not get hot at all. It's, it's always cold. Unless I'm preheating parts of the torch. Uh, you probably can't see it. Anyway, unless I'm preheating parts of the torch, it does not get hot. <clears throat> so, how do I lubricate? It's another question. I get a lot of right here. Now you can use dielectric grease or whatever you'd like to use, I mean, but the number one thing, most important thing, is less is best. That right there is one drop inside there. Uh, and I swear, if you put more or put too much in there, it works like a suction. It slows you down. It won't won't turn it very easily at all. And I like I said, this is this setup is 30 years old, and I use it daily. So let's put it back together. I'll show you how easy that is. Drop that in the cup. Put this through the hole. Into the pipe. And you just spin it with your foot. And that's it. No bearings. <clears throat> and no, no uh, problems getting a ground through it. And another thing, the reason I've, I've, I've just never had time and never messed with making this uh, making this over because of the size of that hole. <laughs> but when you got something you want to raise it up, get your work level higher, it's real simple. And this thing will hold. I've had five, six hundred pound blocks of, of iron on here when I was young and stupid. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> It was back in the valve welding days. But anyway, it just makes things a lot easier. I hope that answered your questions. If there's any more, I know that hey, there's going to be questions. It's going to be a lot of people. What size is this? What size is that? It, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with. I had another guy working for me made this one. He just found scraps. That's all these are, scraps. In fact, look how we ran the ground on that one over there, over there, and back to this leg on the table. And you can tell they were just scraps. That's just a piece that was torch cut off. And the platter was smaller. But again, it's just no problem. It just, it's, this diameter is bigger, and I'm sure the bar that goes into it is bigger than this one. But then, like I said, they were just scraps. I don't just, size does not matter. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. See ya.